the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> His faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past and the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver, the Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! Let's go, big fellow! I'm Silver! It was early one evening when most of the passengers on the Mississippi River boat heard the announcement they had been waiting for. Attention, everybody. You've all been invited into the big cabin here where you'll be privileged to witness an astounding experiment in psychic phenomena. The man who lifts the curtain of eternity. The mystic seer who reveals the unknown. The modern voice of ancient wisdom, Professor Malvern Judd. Uh, uh... Good evening. It is indeed a pleasure to see so many of my fellow passengers who are interested in a demonstration of occult science. How many people are here? Most everybody on the boat, Professor. Not a soul left on deck or in the other cabins. No. Splendid, splendid. My experiments are most successful when everyone is present. Uh, uh, first, a few words of explanation. It is commonly supposed that the wisdom of ancient wise men like King Tutankhamen, Socrates, and Julius Caesar, died with them. This was true until I discovered a method of direct communication. Do you mean you can talk to King to, uh, whatever his name is, and, and Julius Caesar? More than that, it is now possible to obtain the advice of these ancient sages. They will solve any of your personal problems. I will offer a convincing demonstration. However, it is absolutely necessary that all lights be extinguished. Uh, will someone put out the lamps? Why, sure. I'll blow them out. Yeah. Well, that's much better. Now I must have absolute quiet. Uh, quiet, please. Quiet. Oh, mighty king of ancient Egypt, philosopher of Athens, or conqueror of Gaul, speak to us. Speak. He's a fake. You folks are loco if you listen to a faker like him. What the? Billings, where are you? Right here, Professor. I was getting the horn fixed to talk oh, that back. That man who just came in. Get him. Stop him. Sure. Hey, put on the lights there. There's no cause for alarm, folks. The light will be lit in a moment. There. How's that? Uh, I, uh, I'm sorry for the interruption. The man who came in here must be insane. Either that or he's trying to play a joke on all of us. Uh, 
Uh, if you'll excuse me for a moment, uh, I'll be right back. Billings. Billings, is that you? Yeah, I got him, Professor. Just as he was heading for the top deck, you can't stop me from telling people the truth. And believe me, uh, I've shut got... up. Hacker and Hoyt, where are they? Still working in the cabins, I guess. Then you have to take care of this. No noise. Make it quiet. You got a knife? Yeah. Then use it before some of those yokels in the main cabin start investigating. All right. There. Good. Now, quick, over the rail with them. Here. I'll help you. Uh, got rid of him just in time. Who was he, Billings? Do you know? I don't know. But I think he trailed us from St. Louis. He looked like one of the gents that squawked to the law after we Never got mind. through. Never mind. He's out of the way. And we're leaving the East for good. I'm sure Texas will have more profitable for us in our line of work. Well, is that where we're headed? A little town called Buena Vista. Now, why pick out a place like that? I'll tell you later. Find Hoyt and Packer. Tell them to forget about going through the cabins now. The passengers might get suspicious. Sure, Professor. And uh, put our baggage together. We leave this boat at the next landing. Catch a stage going west. To Buena Vista? Yeah, to a lot of money. We play our cards right. <laughs> The Lone Ranger and Tonto had been resting in a secluded camp near the river for several days. It was long after sundown. They'd packed their gear in preparation for an early morning start when Tonto, walking near the riverbank, cried out suddenly. Kimosabi! What's wrong, Tonto? Come quick, you see. You mean the riverboat? It's a regular St. Louis packet heading down the stream for the day. No, not boat. You see, fella, try to swim in the river. Look. You're right. He's having a tough time fighting that current. I wonder if he can make, make it. Hutton? Not a good swimmer. All right, Tonto. But be careful. The main channel out there is tricky. Ah, uh, me go. Uh. Here, Tonto. Grab this rope. I'll help you up the bank. Me uh, got it. Swim good. Me think him hurt. Put him down here on the blanket of the fire. Yes, it looks like. Wait, I'll take off his jacket and shirt. Him hurt. Him hurt bad. An ugly knife wound in his back. Been stabbed. Build up the fire, Tonto. Eat some water. All right, me do it. Where am I? I don't worry about that. Just lie still, fellow. We'll dress your wound for you. Fast. You must be an outlaw. Oh, you're mistaken. No. I'm not an outlaw. My Indian friend is the one who just pulled you out of the river. There's some cloth tallow for bandages. Ah. Uh, how did this happen? We followed crooks on a river boat. Oh, oh. They caught me. Billings put a knife in my back. Pushed me overboard. Easy. Who's Billings? Helps Professor Melbourne Judd. They're, oh, oh, fakers, swindlers, robbers. My mother in St. Louis... Lost all the money she had, and... I'll take it easy. If Professor Judd's on the boat that just passed here, he's headed for New Orleans. We'll send word to the law down there. No, it wouldn't do any good. I heard them by passage in St. Louis, not going south. They're headed west. Is that so? In a particular spot? I heard the professor say, Buena Vista. Buena Vista? Are you sure? Yes, I... I... Easy. Water hot now, Kimasabi. You don't need it, Tonto. That stab wound was too close to his heart. He's dead. Oh, that band. What do we do? Yeah, we'll find the nearest coroner, then try to find out this man's identity. He must be carrying something with his name on it. Ah. Did you hear him mention Buena Vista? Ah. That's where Pop Hendricks lived. That's where we're going to find two murderers named Billings and Malvern Judd. There were two things in life that annoyed Pop Hendricks. First, his rheumatism. And second, a talkative widow named Hortense Applegate. Of the two, he much preferred rheumatism. He could deny its existence. Hortense Applegate was a different matter especially when he met her on the main street of Buena Vista. Good morning, Mr. Hendricks. Hmm? Oh, 
Morning, Hortense. Isn't it a lovely day? Don't you feel just glad to be alive on a day like this? Yeah. You I feel be... even better when you hear the good news I've just received? Yeah. Oh, it's not for me alone. It's for everybody. Mm. Every man, woman, and child in Buena Vista who's interested in uh, higher learning and cultural advancement. Yes, so. Think of it, the most wonderful discovery of the ages. Mm -hmm. We can actually talk to the greatest men who ever lived. Jumping horn toads, what are you gabbling about? He'll be about? here this afternoon, coming in on the stage. I read all about him in a little magazine, so I, I wrote down to St. Louis, and I received a personal reply in his own handwriting. Isn't it what? wonderful? Who will be here? Professor Malvern Judd, exponent of psychic phenomena. Huh? A professor with something like that, huh? Well, maybe it ain't as bad as he thinks. My rheumatism comes and goes in spells. Oh, you fool. Professor Judd isn't sick. He's a scientist. Same thing. He communicates with the greatest men who ever lived. Egyptian kings, Greek philosophers, and Julius Caesar. They talk to him, and, and we can hear them. Oh, I don't believe it. That's the dead-blasted biggest lot of hogwash I ever heard. Oh, so you're a skeptic. Oh, that's another lie. Never joined a lodge in my life. Oh, I don't know why I take the trouble to talk to you, Pop Hendricks. You're, you're impossible. Oh, yeah, I'm impossible. No wonder her husband up and died. If I had to listen to something like that every day, Hi, I'd... Hi, Pop. Hmm? Oh, morning, Sheriff. Couldn't help but hear the widow Applegate tell you her good news. Amazing woman, the widow. Yeah. Sheriff, I always figured you had good sense. You're a crack shot and rough on outlaws. Then you started courting Hortense. Now, wait a minute, Pop. A man's private life yeah, is I know, little... I know. But Jeb Applegate, Hortense's husband, was a good friend of mine. Do you know how he happened to die? Well, that was a long time ago before I came I'll here. tell you. Hortense talked the poor critter to death. Uh, poor Jeb. Wish it was some way I This could... uh, professor fellow Hortense mentioned sounds kind of interesting. Don't tell me you're going to go and get... <laughs> no, no, there's no chance of my even seeing the gent. I'm on duty at the bank most every day and night, guarding that big payroll they're holding for the railroad up at Clemens. Uh, good, Glad Hortense ain't talked you into forgetting your job. Don't worry. I won't. Because you're a good man, Sheriff. I just wish the world had a few less talking females like Hortense Applegate. Oh, 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 why not ride on to Pop Hendricks Ranch? We'll go to Pop's place later, Tonto. I want to wait here for the afternoon stage to Buena Vista. Oh, why we do that, Kimasabi? We're going to hold it up, Tonto. Enough savvy. You know what the lawman in St. Louis told us? That boy we pulled out of the river was named John Ferris. Evidently, his mother was swindled out of quite a bit of money by this Professor Malvern Judd. Oh, how Judd Tonto do swindle? I don't know, Tonto. But I think he uses some sort of fake stunt to hold people's attention while other men do the robberies. My guess on time schedules between here and the Mississippi is right. You ought to be in on this stage. Ah, we stop stage and catch crook, huh? Yeah, it isn't that easy. See, we have no actual proof against Judd. The reason I want to hold up the stage is to find out how many men travel with him and who they are. Oh, we wait here? Yes, Tonto. I don't think we'll have to wait long. Was riding saddle horses. One of them's wearing a mask and the other's a redskin. Mask. They must be outlaws. This is a holdup. Get out of that coach, all of you. Come out with your hands up. Well, what do you think of it? Us getting held up. They can't get away with it. I'm paying you and Miff to swing lead. Get to work. Yeah. You take the redskin class, I'll drill the umbre with the mask. <laughs> The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
continue our story. In the same fraction of a second that Malvern Judd's gunman opened fire from inside the stagecoach, two silver-mounted Colts appeared almost magically in the hands of the Lone Ranger. They were spewing flame and lead. Take the other side, Tonto. So we see how many there are. Uh, Get him up, Scout. Look, the engine's over here now. You fools, can't you hit anything as big as a man on a horse? You better in the mask move so fast I can't hit him. Oh, my arm. Blood right through my arm. Oh. That's enough, Tonto. All right, driver. Take your coach into town. We got what we came for. Get out. Get out. You think them four fellas crooks? Steady, Silver, easy. Yes, I'm sure of it, Tonto. Now that we know what they look like, we can cover every move they make in Buena Vista. Ah. Let's head for Pop Hendricks' ranch. Come on, Silver, come up, scout. Jumping Juniper, I'm sure glad to see you. You could have knocked me over with a frog hair when I rode up to the corral and seen Silver and Scout. Uh, how? I, I knew you and Tonto were waiting here in the house. Good to see you, Pop. Say, uh, tell me more about these outlaw varmints you're trailing. Yeah, they're a brand new brand, Pop. They're here in Buena Vista for some special reason. I don't know exactly what it is. Well, can't you just hog tie the Oh, no, it wouldn't and... stick. I know they've committed murder, but there's no way it can be proved. Because the only witness is dead. Uh, you got any idea who they are? One of them is named Malvern Judd, and I what? think that... Well, I'll be... Not Professor Malvern Judd, a gent who palavers with dead Greeks and Egyptians. Uh, the last part is news to me, but what do you know about Mr. Judd? Well, Hortense Applegate's holding this... Uh, it's, uh, well, you know, a yes. sea ancy, whatever that is, mm -hmm. at her house tonight. This Judd critter's going to do his stuff. Good. I want you to be there, Pop, and see what happens inside the house. I don't know. I'll watch the outside. Billings, what'd you find out? Plenty. There's a $50,000 payroll laying in a tin can safe over at the bank. Huh. How about the house where Mrs. Applegate lives? Can we... Uh... Sure, sure. The layout's perfect. As long as I can spout enough Latin to fool the yokels. Well, Mr. Henry, I see you accepted my invitation after all. Yep, Hortense. Um, curiosity got the best of you. You'll notice that all the cultured and intelligent people in Buena Vista are here to witness the demonstration. Don't blame the poor critters for something they can't help. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if I may have your attention, please. Uh... Professor Malvern Judd. Yep. Say, he's a lot uglier than I figured. Oh, shh. Well, he is. Now, if, uh, if Mrs. Applegate will turn down the lights, we'll proceed with the seance. Uh, oh, of course, Professor. Uh, there. Uh, uh, please, I must insist there be absolute quiet. Isn't this exciting, Pop? It's the dead blasted crazy. Oh, mighty men of the ages. King Tutankhamun, Socrates, or Julius Caesar... Will one of you make your presence known to us? Speak! Speak! Ah, Julius Caesar, we are honored. Oh, mighty Caesar, can you translate your wisdom into the words of this day and these people? I speak in many tongues. Good. Perhaps there are some in this room who doubt your wisdom. Have you a personal message for anyone? I have a message for the fairest flower in the state of Texas. Hortense Applegate. For me? I am unable to speak because there is a thorn beside the flower. What? Thorn? What do you mean, oh mighty Caesar? Why, the mangy varmint must be talking about me. I'm sitting right next to you. Quiet, Papa. I want to hear the rest of it. a large man, six feet three, dark hair, and a
Oh, oh, Bob! Bob Hendricks, where are you going? I've got to see some gents about a, about a snake. Good night, Hortense. Bob. Bob and I are right over here. I, oh, say, that Malvern Judd Critter is a faker. A big faker. I thought so. What happened? A lot of folks were sitting around in the dark. Then somebody starts talking from way off somewheres. Judd claims it's a gent named Julius Caesar, and Hortense Applegate believes him. What did Julius Caesar have to say? I don't know. Something about all Gaul is... Divided into three parts? Yeah, that's it. Then he tells Hortense he's got a personal message for her, but he can't deliver it because I'm sitting there instead of the man who's courting her. And who is that, do you know? Sure, Sheriff Wilcox. Hortense invited him over tonight, but he couldn't come. He's working. Is that so? Uh, keeping a 24-hour guard on that railroad payroll down the bank. Hortense will have him here tomorrow night. Hmm. There's a large amount of money in the bank. This thing begins to make sense. Well, what do you mean? We'll find out tomorrow night. Only part I can't figure out is where did Caesar's voice come from? I know it was a fake, but... Wasn't it... Malvern Judd sitting near an empty fireplace in Mrs. Applegate's house? Why, well, yeah, he was. How'd you know? Because Todd and I stood here and watched a man climb up to the roof. The voice you heard was probably his yelling down the chimney. Well, I'll be dog... What are we going to do? Nothing until tomorrow night. Everything's set. All you two have to do is to stay down there by the bank and watch for a signal from Billings on the roof. Sure, yes, Judd. Sure. I'll keep the yokels entertained until you finish the job. Get moving. I'm going inside. They're waiting for me. The dirty varmints. Wait, wait, I... Pop. Mm -hmm. We want to get them all at the same time. Uh, Here comes Toto. And unless I'm mistaken, he just removed a man named Billings from the roof of Mrs. Applegate's house. Uh, you... Me catch fellow on roof. Tie him up. Good. We'll take him along with us. Uh, you outlaws won't get away with Shut this up. house. I'll show you. Now, Pop, you've got some climbing to do. Where... What do you mean? You'll have to take this man's place up there by the chimney. I don't want Professor Judd to know what's going on. Yeah, but how... I mean, I can't talk that lingo like he does. The professor can't stop you. You can remember all gall is divided into three parts, can't you? Sure. Now, whatever you do, keep the professor busy until we get back. Come on, Toto. Uh. Uh, now that the lights are out, uh, I'll try to establish contact with one of the wise men of the ages. Quiet, please. Professor, I do hope it's Julius Caesar again. Sheriff Wilcox is here with me tonight. Oh, mighty Caesar, make your presence known to us. Speak, speak. All God is divided into three parts. Uh, 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 have you a personal message for Hortense Applegate? All God is divided into three parts. I, uh... Well, there must be something wrong. All God is divided into three parts. Professor, is that all he can say? Well, I, uh, uh perhaps uh, King uh, Tatankaman will speak. Uh, 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 speak to us, King Tatankaman. All God is divided into three parts. Or, or, or maybe it's uh, Socrates who, uh, 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 speak, uh, Socrates. All God is divided into three parts. Those two men across the street in front of the bank. They're the rest of your gang. Listen, Owl Hoot, I'm not... Shut up and answer me. Oh. Yeah. That's Miff Hoyt and Kles Packer. Call them over here. Tell them the plan's been changed. There won't be any bank robbery. But I tell Let you... Let him go, I... Uh -uh. I want to handle it without gunplay if possible. But remember this, Billings. Unless you do exactly as I told you. <laughs> All right. Walk over there. Miff. Kles. Billings. What are you doing down here? Yeah, the sheriff's gone. We were just waiting for your signal. Now the professor's changed his mind. There won't be any bank robbery. There won't be any. Say, what's wrong with you? Well, I, I... Back of me, the outlaw and the Indian. What's the... Look, Miff. Let him have it. You asked for this. Oh, my leg. No, 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 no. Hold your fire. Keep these two covered, Toto. No. Billings is trying to make a run for us. Uh, I haven't got a gun. You wouldn't kill a Not man who... punch him in the jaw. We'll do the job. No. Oh, you get him. Yes, Toto. How about Hoyt and Packer? Me use rope. Tie them together. Good. This one won't be conscious for a while. Take all three of them to the sheriff's office, Tonto. Ah, and what you do about Judd Feller? I'm going to get the professor right now. What's 
be something wrong, Professor. If that's really Julius Caesar, I can't understand why yes, he doesn't... Yes, yes, I'll... Uh, uh, I, I mean, I'll try again. Uh, uh, Billy, uh, uh, I, I, I mean, Almighty Caesar, please, you must have a message for Hortense Applegate. Caesar's fired! I'll talk to Hortense! Uh, who, who are you? Jeff Applegate! Uh, her husband's uh, 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 Jeff! Really, you? Yeah. Oh, but Jeb, your your voice sounds so strange. Uh, uh, sort of happy. I am happy, Hortense. Never felt better. Uh, happier than when you were here on Earth with me, Jeb? Yeah. A lot happier than when I was with you. Oh well, if that's true, Jeb, heaven must be a wonderful place. I ain't in heaven, Hortense. Uh, what's the meaning of this? Turn up the lamp, Mrs. Applegate. There's no reason for any of you people to be afraid, except Professor Judd. Oh, yeah. There. Now there's more light. We... Oh, you are an outlaw. Listen, you can't Just a minute, this. Sheriff. I wouldn't reach for that hideout gun if I were you, Professor. I'll get it. Oh, oh, my hand. That man's a fake, Sheriff. He and his gang plan to rob the bank tonight. He used this stunt to get you away from your duty. And I fell for it. You'll find the other three men of his gang tied up at your office. They're all wanted in St. Louis on a swindle and murder charge. Will you take care of it, Sheriff? Sure, sure I will. Good. Adios, amigo. Bank robbers, huh? And another outlaw turns them in, if he is an outlaw. Hortense, I'm going down to my office. Oh, yes. Professor Melvin Judd, a fake. Oh, I can hardly believe it. I wonder how he did it. If Julius Caesar wasn't talking, who was? Now, maybe if I tried it, just like the professor did, I might be able to... Um, uh, Almighty Caesar, make your presence known. Speak. Uh, uh, speak. My juniper old goal is still divided into three parts. I will still be... you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.